So now that we have the casing all by itself, if you want to do any kind of spray paint mods or anything, this is what you can do. All you have to do is take apart the whole thing, spray paint it down, and you can have whatever you know color that you want. Whether it be a chrome or a blue or you know whatever. The important thing is that all the buttons are removed. So that's how you get the casing by itself. Let's go into more depth now and let's talk about some of the triggers, the bumpers, and the joysticks. So here are the bumpers. The bumpers are actually connected to this middle piece here. All we have to do to disconnect the bumpers is press downward and lift up on this middle section. And you'll notice they separate. These are the bumpers. They're actually connected to each other. They're not individual pieces. If we want, we can spray paint this section now or the bumpers by itself. You can also exchange bumpers between controllers. So if you want white bumpers instead of black ones, um, you know, you can have white bumpers on like a black piece here, or you can have black on black, white on white, doesn't matter. And this piece basically is by itself. Now let's go ahead and go to the chipboard. To get the joysticks off, we're going to flip it around. And the joysticks are very simple. All you have to do is lift up on the joysticks. This is actually a mechanism that reads the joysticks movement. And these can be used for either Xbox 360 joysticks, PlayStation 2 joysticks, PlayStation 3 joysticks, and some second party uh, manufacturers. Although it's not recommended because they might not fit the right way. Um, you can use them with uh, aftermarket controllers and things like that. But um, what I would recommend using is either a PlayStation 3 or an Xbox 360. The PlayStation 2 ones work, but they don't work as well. Um, the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox ones are practically identical as far as you know how accurate they are and how well the uh, they get read on the chipboard. Um, as far as the look, obviously they're different, but you know as far as the accuracy and everything. They're practically identical. So that's how you remove the joysticks. If you want to replace your joysticks or spray paint them or do anything to them, this is how you can get them isolated so you don't damage the chipboard. Just simply pull them off. The next thing we're going to take off is the rumble packs. Rumble packs are what make the controller vibrate whenever you, you know, get shot in a game or maybe in a racing game when you start driving on the edge of the road. So the rumble packs, all you have to do is pinch on the sides and give them a little tug and they come off just like that. Rumble packs, in my opinion, aren't necessary to take off um, because there's really no no modifications that you can do to the rumble packs. If you don't like the rumble at all and you just want to get rid of it, you can take the rumble packs off. But, you know, most games have the option to turn off the vibration inside of the game. So it's kind of pointless to, you know, go through all this hassle just to remove the rumble packs. But there you go. That's how you take the rumble packs off. The only thing we have left to remove now are the triggers from the Xbox 360 chipboard. Now before removing the triggers, I will tell you that the triggers are the most complicated part um, to disassemble. And they are also the part that is the most likely to break, seeing how you're going to have to force certain pieces in directions they may not want to go. So before attempting this, I will say one thing. If all you want to do is switch out black triggers for white triggers, or any other color of triggers that you may please, what I would recommend is just exchanging the entire chipboard. So if you have a white controller that you want black triggers, get controller that has black triggers and just take the entire chipboard. The chipboard are the same, so really it makes no difference whether you take off the triggers and exchange them or just exchange the entire chipboard. But if you want to take off your triggers to do any kind of spray paint mods, this is how you're going to have to do it. I will again say that you need to be very careful in doing this because they are likely to break if you're not careful. So, what we're going to do is, I'm only going to do this on one of them, and you're going to do the same thing on the other one, which is identical. So we're going to start with this big, long, white piece here. The part that when you push down on the trigger, it moves downward as well. We need to disconnect this from the actual black trigger itself. Now to remove this, we're going to take the white part and push it to the outside, and take the trigger and push it to the inside. Now once you've done this, you're going to want to push down on the white piece so that it falls underneath the trigger. And again, be very careful when doing this. Just like that. So now the trigger is now free from that white part. 
So again, push out and down and try to only push as far as you have to. Once you have the trigger isolated from that big long white piece, all you're going to do is pinch sideways on this piece right here and sideways on this piece right here. And the trigger will move upwards. Like so. Helps have nails, by the way, for this part. Now the trigger is just kind of free floating here. It's still connected to the spring. All you're going to do is move it sideways, wiggle it back and forth until it pops off completely. Now the trigger is isolated. You can also take off the, sp the spring if you want, although there's no reason to. All you have to do for the other triggers, do the same thing.